Log Talk Radio. Welcome to Awake to Oneness Radio. I am your host, Caroline Chang. And the mission of Awake to Oneness Radio is to inspire the world to awaken to the concept of oneness. Spirituality and science have been telling us for many years that we are literally all one. We're literally connected. So basically what you do to another person you're literally doing to yourself. And I believe um, once the world awakens to this universal spiritual truth, um, there will be peace on earth. So the mission of the show is just to inspire people to awaken to the concept of oneness. Today's topic is From Confusion to Clarity with guest author and poet Michelle Harvey. Michelle contacted me a few weeks ago after my first show. Uh, she resonated with the first show um, uh, because of two things. Uh, she also lost her son when he was 23 at a very young age. Um, and she, her mother and my mother happened to have the same birth date. So she contacted me, and when, she, and we, when we first spoke, I just resonated with everything she said. It's like we connected instantly, and I am so honored to have her as our guest tonight. So I am, okay, here she is. Uh, Takes a while for this technology. Hi, Michelle. How are you? Hi there. Thank you very much for having me. I'm honored to be here. Oh, great. Wonderful. Thank you. I am so honored that you are here with us tonight. And could you, you know, just tell the audience a little bit about you, yourself, and how you came to write the book? The title of her book is From Confusion to Clarity. And if you could tell us a little bit about your story and how you came to write the book. Well, (laughs) okay. I, um... I had an experience in 2009 that kind of started the ball rolling, but uh, even even though this experience that I had was incredibly, incredibly profound, it wasn't until 2011 when I actually lost my son that I was kind of, I was really at the bottom of my life emotionally (laughs) uh, in, in, not only, you know, because I lost him, but in general, it was a very, very difficult year for me in 2011. So I think that that kind of cracked me open to the point where um, that's when I started to write the book. Um, Basically, uh, I follow the messages of Neil Donald Walsh, uh, a modern-day spiritual teacher, Mm -hmm. Or messenger. He prefers to be known as a messenger. Um, And uh, I went to a a workshop that he gave in 2009 in Denver, Colorado. And um, during the workshop, he led us through this meditation that he does. And it was the first time I had ever done it. And this was in a very large uh, room full of people. I mean, the room was really packed. There were probably, you know, a couple of thousand people there. And he led us through a meditation where you basically ask a question to the divine or, you know, God or whatever the divine is for you. So you, um, you think of an important question, something that, you know, is really meaningful. Uh, it could be something that's, you know, a question that you've thought of many times and just have never been able to figure out the answer, Uh, you write it down on a piece of paper, and then you just let go of it. You forget the question, and he leads you through this meditation where you basically go into a very, at least for me, a very deep trance-like state where your body is completely relaxed and, you know, your, your mind is completely clear and you're just present. You're just in the moment. And, um... 
when you open your eyes, when you come out of the meditation, you write down the first thing that comes to your mind, and that's the answer to your question. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's extremely profound. Uh, you may not think, you know, sometimes uh, he said it's possible you may open your eyes and think that you didn't receive any answer at all. Just make it up. Write down the first thing that pops into your mind, and it, you know, and and that will be the answer to your question. So, um, I did this meditation, and the question I asked was, you know, I think a question that almost anyone in my situation would ask, because my son was born with a genetic illness. He was diagnosed late at the age of three. Most people with this illness, he had cystic fibrosis. And most people with cystic fibrosis are diagnosed when they're like eight months old. My son was not diagnosed until he was three years old. But uh, the disease does not have a good prognosis because it's progressive and it's incurable. So uh, my son had a relatively uh, healthy childhood. I mean, he was on a million and one medications. And were it not for insurance, we would have all been living in tents in the street. Um, But with the medications and the other treatments that he was on, he was living a relatively normal life. Uh, But we knew this was progressive, and we had to be very diligent in his treatments. And so, you know, and and in 2009, my son was alive and, you know, relatively healthy. But the question I asked during that meditation is, why? You know, why was my son this beautiful soul, um, this amazing human being, you know, why was he born with this genetic illness that's basically guaranteed to seriously shorten his life? You know, and, and why, you know, why me and why my family and why us? You know, the, the things, the, the victim, the victimhood, you know, that, that we tend to um, ascribe to things that seem out of the ordinary. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, all I can say is that the answer that I received was so mind-blowing to me, uh, and it was just in six words. And the answer was, and I, I have to preface it before I tell you, <laughs> that you know, in addition to the six-word answer, uh, the part that I can't really explain well is that there were many, many images that sort of went flying through my mind that illustrated the answer that I received at the same time that I heard the answer? Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. And the answer mm-hmm. that I received was uh, regarding my son was in his wholeness, wholeness, W-H-O-L-E-N-E-S-S, in his wholeness, he is here. Mm. Wonderful. Yes. The thing about this answer is that I received this answer in my own voice, but those are not words that I use. I knew that right. it wasn't me. Yeah, it wasn't me. You know, like mm-hmm. Neil, Neil Donald Walsh says, you know, God speaks to us all the time. Uh, right. It's just a question of who listens. Um, right. Yeah, and, and so you know, I heard this answer in my vo- in my own tone of voice, but there was no question in my mind where it was coming from because the the language was kind of so completely foreign to me. It was completely, I mean, it was familiar, but it was completely out of character with the way I speak or even the way I write, you know, and it it just completely blew me away because what came through with those six words were, were images of like thousands, just like thousands of different examples of how we label things and we compare things and we judge things and we categorize everything. I mean, this is the way we live in the world as people, you know. Right. And, and the mm-hmm. point is this is how, you know, people are pattern-seeking creatures and this is how we make sense of the world around us is by comparing, you know, she's taller than him and, 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 and you know, and it tur- and then we – but we ascribe labels to things as well, and a lot of times these labels are, you know, far less than flattering. You know, we say if someone is from uh, another part of the world, they're foreign, and if, you know, if somebody learns at a different rate than someone else, they're slow, and, you, you know, I mean, it just goes on and on the, the the way we do this. And then what happens is we 
basically conform to to uh, drill that in and make sure those labels really stick. And then that's how we define ourselves and in the world, you know, based on uh, you know it, it, competition and separatism. And so the point being that. You know, obviously, uh, it's a very, very painful experience to lose a child and lose someone that you love at a young age, you know. Yes. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously. Uh, uh, but but the point is that, you know, my son was born with this illness, and so from the time that you get that diagnosis with your child, you know, most people start to think that in some way the child is not whole. Like there's something wrong with them. There's something wrong with this person. You know, this is what you think when someone has an illness. There's something wrong with them. That's what we say. But I realized Mm -hmm. that, you know, if you stop, if if we, if we stop comparing. In fact, this is the quote I just put on my Facebook page. Uh, this evening, when we remove the labels and judgments we as people tend to place on things, we are left to experience the bliss in the isness of all things. Very true. So, you know, the point is that, you know, in so many ways we rob ourselves of the goodness and the pleasure and, you know, the wonder of our differences, the wonder of, you know, the diversity in the world, because we're constantly comparing things. So if you think that, you know, the the quote-unquote normal life expectancy of a person today is supposed to be, I don't know, 80 years old or whatever, you know, 78 or whatever it is, you know, then, you know, you see a small child and, you you know, you get that that uh, life expectancy information and you start to think that, you know, it, this is so tragic and this is so horrible. Then you feel sorry for the person instead of being able to just rejoice and celebrate their life and live in the present moment one day at a time is all any of us have anyway. Right. As far well, as we absolutely. know, even though, I mean, life is eternal, but the reality right. is, you know, we you know, we don't know how long this particular uh, go-around is going to be for any of us. Incarnation. Well, the truth right. is one, mom- one moment at a time, not one day at a time, one moment at a time, and it is eternal. That moment is eternal, like you said. There is, there is but it, in this incarnation, I understand what you're saying. We, we, we on, on a human conscious level don't know how long our incarn- incarnation is will be but from the soul level we plan when we come and we plan when we leave so uh i understand exactly what you're saying that's fascinating because um i'm just uh we i mentioned the things we had in common in the opening of the show but um 2011 honestly i didn't know till just now that was the year you lost your son and 2011 was also a very tough year for me because that was the year my son was diagnosed with his illness and the month after my son was diagnosed with the illness I lost my mom so in 2011 so that was that's another thing we have in common that year of 2011 being a very uh difficult year um but i i i like i said every time i talk to you michelle i say i resonate with every word you're saying so much um even earlier you asked me how my day was and everything you just said um goes with what what my day was like today um i i with people you love you you know that you want the best for and you see them walking a certain path that you yourself would not walk. You know, you we judge and label, okay, that's wrong. No, you shouldn't do that. And and especially if it's someone close to you like a child. Um, both my children, um, when my son was diagnosed in 2011, I wanted I I'm I've always been holistic and taken a holistic approach to my health care. So as soon as he was dying, he he had a very healthy childhood. I don't can't remember him ever even going to the doctor as a child. He broke his leg when he was five, but other than that, <laughs> he had extremely healthy childhood. He played 
football in high school. Um, so uh, when he was diagnosed with congestive heart failure at age 26, that was just a real shock. And my thoughts were for him to change his life. He was a smoker. He was overweight. Um, he liked to party, you know, and enjoy life. But I'm like, okay, we, we got to change all of that now. You know, you have congestive heart failure. Your heart is very weak. You have to change your life drastically. And, you know, me as a mother, I don't want to lose my child. So I'm like on him, you know, you, got, you can't do this. You can't eat that. You can't, you know. And then I, I got to a point where I stopped doing that. I said, you know what, I have to just let him be. I, you know, he, when he, he just, he turned 20. I celebrated his 29th birthday with him. And I said to myself, you know, I, I, I have to just love him. And I'll, I can share with him what I think is best for him, but he's going to make his own decision. He's going to walk his own path. And I had to accept that he is a divine human being. He is divine in his essence. And he's okay. You know, um, whether he's here in this incarnation or not, he is okay. And I'm do I'm going actually through the same thing right now with my daughter. She's not deathly ill like my son was, but she's making decisions in her life that I, I, from a motherly standpoint, and, and, and I'm just thinking are not the best decisions for her. But I have to take a step back. I have to let her be her. And I have to, only thing I could do is just love her and say, I always love you. And instead of spending time bickering, you know, because they're not doing what you would like them to do, just continue to love them and, and, um, you know, spend that time more productively and loving them and allowing them to be and not labeling, okay, what they're doing as right or wrong, just that. You know, it's it's from their perspective, they're walking their path. So it's just it's uh, very very awesome that um, you you brought that up. Um, the whole it ties into yes. uh, allowing so much allowing. Of, a, yes, go ahead. Go ahead. So go much ahead. of what you said too also really resonates with me. I have a younger son, and it's the same thing. You know. I have to step back and just, you know, we don't know the agenda of another person's soul, no matter how close they are to us. Exactly. You, you don't know that. You don't know that. I mean, you know, in, in most of us don't know the agenda of our own souls on a conscious level. You certainly True. don't know the agenda of anyone else's soul. And and that includes what you, you know, exactly what you said before in terms of, um how long a person has decided they're going to stick around in this particular incarnation. You know, exactly. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and so, um, and the point is also that, uh, you know, it's very interesting. I mean, both of us, our lives and the way and our, uh, the the purpose that we're pursuing has changed quite dramatically since we've lost our children. So exactly. the, the point yeah. is that, you know, that's also their soul's agenda as well the healing that they that they are bringing it to the world that they mm -hmm. left you know so to exactly. speak exactly yeah mm -hmm. and it's it's very very profound because um when i went um in 2011 um on 11 11 11 november 11th 2011 mm -hmm. i went okay. to a a week-long retreat with um, Neil Donald Walsh in Oregon. It was uh, called, like, Living Your True Purpose. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I had lost my son at the end of March, and so this was early November. When I went to the retreat, you know, I shared the experience that I had in 2009 and, I, you know, that I had lost my son. And, and uh, a lot of people in the room... You know, I mean, we all shared experiences, and a lot of people resonated with my experience that we're dealing with different illnesses and things like that. And, um, you know, Neil said, and he didn't only say this about my experience, you know, but he said specifically, you know, there's healing going on in this room. Mm. And he talked about 
how, you know, the, it's a very interesting thing about the manifestations of the soul. It's like, you know, you don't actually have to be here physically <laughs> for that to be taking place. And exactly. so it's 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 very very it's all very profound. And I went through the same thing with my son at the time that you're talking about too. That when he was younger, you know, I mean, I was working in the medical field at that time as a registered dietitian. So I used to go to the cystic fibrosis uh, conferences. That okay. these were. Mm-hmm you know, people from all over the world, medical experts and scientists and things, because they were on a, you know, the hot trail of research for a cure, which they still are, you know. And so okay. they, uh, I would go to the, the sessions, I could go, and I could go there, and I had the option of, I didn't have to tell anyone I was the mother of a child, because I was also going as a healthcare professional. So okay. I kind of got to be the fly on the wall, you know, and you learn about all the research and everything. And then if I felt, right. you know, people treat you differently when you're a caregiver. That I mean, when you're a yeah a caregiver as opposed to somebody who's prov- uh, in the field, in the medical field, right. as opposed mm-hmm. to being a caregiver of a child, your own child. So, um, you know, I would come home from these conferences and I would be like a Nazi mom. You know, you have to do this and you have to do that. And you have to do this and you have to do that. And this, you know, and I was all over my husband too, like you know, because he also needed my son needed. Um, chest percussion therapy where you basically are pounding on his back and his chest and his stomach for okay. 40 minutes at a time to like loosen right. up uh, mucus secretions and everything and I would be yeah. yelling at my husband you're not doing it right you're not doing it hard enough you're not turning him the right way I mean you know I was just ballistic so when right. my son reached the age of college and he was more independent and I my husband and I uh, divorced and you know and I was also much more independent and, uh, you know, when my son reached the point where he had to be more responsible for taking care of himself, he went right. through a point where he became really quite selective, like, well, this is easy to do, so I'll do this, but that's not the, that treatment's not a pain in the butt, so I'm not going to do it, you know. So he right. started skipping, and, you know, and I had a really long talk with him. He was, oh, gosh, I'm going to guess 19 or 20 years old at the time. And Mm -hmm. I said to him, I just want to make sure that you are consciously aware of the ramifications of the decisions that you're making about your health care. I want to make sure that you really understand the choices you're making and, you know, and what that means. And he basically said, you know, I really want to live my life However long it is, it's like I want to do what my friends are doing. I I'm not going to allow this disease to define me. Oh, okay. he's like, mm-hmm. yeah, he's like, I'm not going to yeah. let it define me. It's it's you know, yeah. it's it's not it's not what I am. You know, I'm not right. going to sit around and do treatments all day long and feel like I'm handicapped. You know, and and we didn't right. raise him that way either. We you know we we did everything with our kids. I mean, we get, right. we had a, right. a very full life, a, mm-hmm. and. But but the point is, you know, when I said to him, do you realize that, um, you know, this is going to seriously, it's going to shorten your life, what you're doing is, I mean, it wasn't even a, it might, it was, it, it is going to, you know. And, and, and um, he basically said, well, everybody in the world has been telling me this since I was three years old, so I think I really do get it. You know, oh, okay. and, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, but, he just came yeah. right back with that. And when I when he said that, I I was like, OK, then whatever you decide yeah. to do, I support you 100 percent and you have all right. my love, you know, because you really do have to let everybody has to make those choices themselves. Yes. And those yes, choices are. Let. Yeah. And yes. they're made for for different reasons than what mm-hmm. we usually think they are. They're coming from a different place. Because yes, that's, that's that reminds me, I don't mean to cut you off, but that reminds me of my favorite, and has always been, my favorite quote from a movie, Steel Magnolia. I don't know if you're familiar with the movie, but uh, it's the same thing we're talking about, a mother arguing with a daughter that's ill, and um, doctors advised her against having a baby, and she wanted to have a baby, and she got pregnant. You know, she's married, has a baby, going to have a baby, which can shorten her life. And she said, I'd rather live one moment 
of wonderful than a lifetime of nothing special. So that what what your son said to you just reminded me of that quote, and that has always been one of my favorite quote, quotes. I don't know if you've seen the movie, but if you haven't, it's one you must see. Still Magnolias. No, I haven't. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, it's <laughs> phenomenal. You have to see the movie. Okay. <laughs> yes. So, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, no, no, that's a, that's, that. a, that's a great quote. That's a, yes. that's, that sounds great. Um, so the, the interesting thing about this book, From Confusion to Clarity, is that, mm-hmm. you know, I, I mentioned to you before we got on the call that I, I reread it recently, quite recently. <laughs> and right. uh, it struck me it struck me this time around, after not having read it for a while, you know, that, um, you know, the book, it starts out talking about the meditation experience and the question that I asked my son about my son but mm-hmm. I was quite surprised about how little the book is actually about my son. It's not really mm. about him. I didn't, you know, yes. he was a, a very remarkable person. He had qualities and traits that no one in our family has on either side, you know. Mm-hmm. My, my, I, I just want to say that, I mean, my, my ex-husband, who is a wonderful guy, you know, and we're still right. on, we're in very, we're in very good terms, and, and I'm quite fond of him. And, um, I mean, he was basically, and still is in some ways, shy, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, when he was growing up through high school and things, he, he wasn't popular. He didn't have a lot of friends. He pretty much stuck to himself. Um, me, I consider myself to be an introverted extrovert. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because I definitely okay. have a shy side too, um, and uh, I, I can be—I'm quite timid in some ways, but yet I'm outspoken. Uh, it's you know, and uh, and sometimes awkward in social situations. But my son David, um, he, you know, and, and even my younger son is not like him at all. My my son David had this quality where, I mean, he just basically was able to see into people. He had right. incredible intuition, and he was very sensitive. Uh, he was wow. a Pisces. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, he, it was a thing where he just seemed to know what to do in situations. Like, I just give a brief example that, um, and I actually, I mentioned this at his, his service when he passed away, that, um, you know, when he was, I don't know, seven or eight years old, uh, we ha- we were out all day, and when we came home later on in the day, all the kids were outside. We lived in a cul-de-sac. All these kids right. were outside playing in the cul-de-sac, and it was we lived in Florida at the time. It was pretty hot outside, and but he want my son wanted to play, and because these kids had been engaged in whatever game they were playing with balls and sticks and whatever, you know, they didn't pay too much attention to to my son because you know they had been playing for hours, and we just pulled up in the car, you know. Uh, so he wanted to play with them. So what he it was really funny because what he did was, you know, I, I, I turned the key in the door, I opened the door, and the minute I opened the door, my son goes bolting into the house. He opens the refrigerator and he takes out these two 12 packs of Gatorade. You know, Gatorade came in the boxes with, uh, right. and uh, right. He takes out two 12 packs of Gatorade and without even asking or anything, just goes, and he's seven or eight years old, he goes running outside with the Gatorade, puts it down in the middle of the cul de sacs, and yells to all the kids, Wouldn't you all like something nice and cold to drink? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, I mean, he was, was so smart. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, he was amazing. Yeah. He was an amazing kid. He was so giving and, and so mm-hmm. perceptive. And so then, you know, of course, they all stopped what they were doing and came to drink the Gatorade. And then, you know, <laughs> some of them put their arms around him. And then they they embraced him and brought them into their game and into their circle. Right. Yeah. Which is, yes. you know, and yes. he always, yeah, he always had this knack. You know, he was mm-hmm. always into helping people. You know, if somebody got hurt, one of the kids at school uh, broke his leg. My son, the entire time, carried his books when the kid was on crutches. Wow. I mean, the whole time, he carried his books you know, like, for a month. Honestly, I, I, honestly, that does sound a lot like Kyle. Kyle was just a very loving and giving and jolly. Jolly was his uh, handle on his when he <laughs> played his video games. Uh, so he was just very loving, giving, and loved making friends and protective. 
uh, he was a security guard, and he was big. He was tall and big. Six. I'm I'm five two. He's six two, and a big guy. And wow. he loved to very protective of his 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 me and his sister and his close friends. Very protective and loved his job as a security guard. And well, at six two, I'm sure he was <laughs> a formidable yeah. security guard. Yeah, uh, yes. funny. Uh huh. Yes. And I, and and no. also at six two with you at five two, you certainly looked up to him. <laughs> I had to say that. Yes, I did have to look up. Uh-huh. <laughs> He's always looking down at the top of my head. Uh-huh. Uh, well, now but, I uh, do so want to. Um, I oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I do want to open the uh, phone line. Uh, there was a call, but um, that let's let's um, open the phone lines to anyone that may. And I do want you to tell us, please tell us more about your book. But I just wanted to give the number out to anyone who had a question. The number to call in is three four seven. Eight five seven one zero eight three. Again, the number is three four seven eight five seven one zero eight three. If you have a question for Michelle, okay, okay, Michelle, tell us more about your wonderful book. Oh, okay. I thought there was somebody on the line. No? There was, but they're gone. I don't know if they dialed in and they are going to call back. Um, but okay. right now, it's just. You and I. <laughs> okay. okay, so I okay. had started to say that I was surprised to to recall when I reread the book uh, that mm-hmm. um, I actually don't really talk that much about my son. The the basic mm-hmm. point of my book is that you know it it, it it's to shift people to live from their soul as opposed mm-hmm. to their only only their rational mind and all of the and to question their beliefs about things uh in lieu of all of the things that we are bombarded with and told to believe from the time we come into this world right the programming and, and yeah the programming <laughs> the mm-hmm. ubiquitous <laughs> programming and also yeah. to uh to overcome the tendency to judge things because that's part of the programming i mean so it's a right. that's, you know huge part of the programming and that um by doing that it basically will shift every aspect of how you experience your life in so that you can you can really live fully and live from a place of wholeness and joy because that message that i received really pertains to all of us that in our wholeness we are here all mm. of us so true true yes yes and um it's a very very far cry from the way i was raised you know my mm-hmm. parents were very critical people <laughs> very critical of everything and everyone that in any way disagrees with anything they believe you know, mm. and uh, I mean, this is the reality, but you know, people are not, you know, and this is the way things are. I mean, it doesn't mean that we have to like everything that occurs, but there's a difference. You know, the book talks a lot about um, something that Neil teaches, which is that um, to focus, like, I, I focus a lot on meditation because I meditate every day. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, by by getting to that still place within, and then there is a moment, or more than a moment, really, where you know Neil talks about these questions that you can ask yourself every day so that you basically decide how it is you're going to show up in the world, like mm-hmm. you know what you're going to be in the world right so mm-hmm. so for example, if you decide that you're going to be gratitude and i'm not saying you should be be grateful but actually you know neil talks about becoming the embodiment of what it is you choose to be mm-hmm. so for example if you say you know today i'm going to show up as gratitude and then you check in with yourself frequently throughout the day to make sure that you're not you know slipping cuz we occasionally do myself included I I'm very far from perfect <laughs> I mean total human being here um uh-huh. but the point is that if we decide how we're going to show up and we set an intention to show up that way um then you know when things happen in the world that normally we might lash out at 
and judge. Instead, right. we can look at that. We can look at that, and it actually. Well, first of all, you develop more compassion, but also yeah. you can look at it and and compare that to how you have chosen to show up. And the point is that that way you're ex- actually experiencing yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, you know. Yeah. So if somebody yeah. in your environment is extremely angry, and you have decided that today, you know, for today, anger is not the way you're showing up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and you see that someone's very angry. I mean, it could just serve to remind you of how you're showing up, and it also can remind you since that person is angry, that means that anger is part of the human experience. I mean, right. you know, I mean, it's 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 a potential that you have. It's a, it's something that you have decided that you're not showing up that way. So instead of judging, it becomes something where you start to realize what you prefer rather than what you hate. See, I used to, you know, in the past, I used to use words like hate quite frequently. I mean, okay. somebody, a friend of mine once said to me, you know, Michelle, you use the word hate a lot. Mm. And I was so shocked when she said it to me. I never forgot it because I was completely unaware of it. Right, you, know? you didn't realize it until she brought it to your attention. Yeah, I was completely, yeah. I wasn't yeah. consciously aware of it at all. And right. uh, obviously it stuck because, I mean, I still I still remember her saying it, and it, was, it wasn't recently, it was a long time ago. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, so, so then when you up-level your judgments to preferences, um, it, it makes the world a much more peaceful place in terms of tolerance and exactly. understanding. Exactly. Exactly, exactly, because for me, I look at every, know every one of us is a divine light, you know, inside, um, choosing this incarnation, and I can look at another's actions and say, well, that that's not, wouldn't be my actions, wouldn't be my preference, but I know who they truly are, so how I react to them is, who I want to be in the world. So for me, I find that um, when situations arise that are quote-unquote that we can label unpleasant, how I react to them tells me um, internally if I'm actually changing. Because if, I'm, if I react to the state, the situation is exactly the way I, I would have reacted to it 10 years ago, then there wasn't really a, a change there. But if I could look at the situation and say, okay, I don't prefer that, but it is what it is. So now it is. The situation is here in front of me. Now how I react to that situation tells me, gauges my internal gauge on if I'm growing in the direction I want to grow in. So exactly, I, I, exactly. Mm-hmm. Our reactions tell uh, tell us a lot more about ourselves than they do about mm-hmm. anybody or anything uh, else. Exactly, exactly. And, yeah, so um, what was I going to say? I just had a thought in my head and it, it left. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I do that, too, <laughs> all the time. Like, um, the thought is right there and then it's like, Oh, where did it go? <laughs> where yeah, did it go? So, um, well, con- cl- clari- um, confusion to clarity. Um, for me, I have to say this too, because um, the title um, from confusion to clarity, honestly, there, I, there was a one sentence that kind of made everything clear for me. And that was, I was watching What the Bleep. I don't, I'm not sure if you're familiar oh, with... Oh, sure. um, You are. Okay. This is in uh, October of 2007. I'm um, watching, and I watched, I watched the four DVDs. I watched the original and the, uh, the three DVDs that came with the extended down the rabbit hole. I mean, I just took a whole weekend, and all I did is watch What the Bleep. But this one sentence, um, Lynn McTaggart said, she said, the biggest uh, problem in the world today is the illusion of separateness. And when Mm -hmm. she said that, it's like a light bulb went off for me. And 
um, I, I've been reading metaphysical um, books and spirit, studying spirituality for on and off for 20, 30 years. And I was always confused. I'm like, this sounds good, but I'm confused because all of the, like you said, the programming that we're programmed with from birth. You know, so I, I have all this programming, uh, eight years of Catholic school, and I'm, I'm not saying anything against Catholic school, I just, but all this programming I have, I have um, internally, and then I'm reading something, to- telling you something totally different, I had nothing but confusion, but I'm like, I, I like what I'm reading. But when she said that, a light bulb went off for me. The, the biggest um, problem in the world today is the illusion of separateness. When you understand that we are all one, everything's connected, it made everything made sense to me. Everything I read made sense to me. Uh, Conversations with God books made sense to me. Uh, The Power of Now made sense to me. All the books that I was trying to read before that I couldn't understand, um, and then now I pick up those same books, I read them, and they make sense to me. Because that that was, and I know for everybody it's different. For everybody, everybody has a different um, different author or different um, different speaker that might inspire them to awaken. Because I believe true yes. awakening comes comes from within. You know what another person can do is just inspire that awakening. And I believe for me, um, the the DVD um, also finding out that science is proving all of the. Um, spiritual principles that I've been studying for years, science has proven <laughs> that they're real. I was like, wow. The, yeah, the whole documentary, um, What the Bleep, just blew me away. And But what it did is inspire that internal um, awakening inside of me. And I think for everybody, it's going to be a different, It's gonna, everybody's going to have a different story of how they awaken. You know, okay, this, yeah, but it's, and I believe that, and something, you know, years ago, like you were saying about the voice, uh, it was in your own voice, but you knew it wasn't from you. Years ago, um, in a meditate, I was meditating, um, something told me all of your ans, all of the answers you're looking for, seeking, you can find within. That that was just like a voice that came. It's you can find all of the answers from within, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know. But I knew it wasn't. It didn't. It was even though it was in my voice, I knew it wasn't me saying that. It was, uh, I believe, my higher self giving me that message that go within to seek the answers that you're looking for. And I I always say that to a person. It's not. It's not a book, it's not an author, it's not a speaker. They can inspire, and they're great, and they're wonderful. And like you said, Neil likes to be referred to as a messenger, and I, he's a great messenger. I love Neil. Um, so they, they, there's a, lots of messengers in the world, but the, the truth resonates from a place of in, inside you. You know, it's your soul kind of saying, yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. And it's the, the strange thing, it is different for everyone. Everybody's going to have a different experience of awakening. But uh, it's just... Absolutely. I mean, because yeah. when we talk about being all one, it doesn't mean we're all the same. I mean, we're, we're all different exactly. people, you know? Exactly. It's um, like an, every, every snowflake, every beautiful snowflake is totally different, you know? But yes, it's, it's not definitely... Uh, uh, variety is the spice of life. We are, we are not the same. We're all one, but we're not all the same. That is so true. Very true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very true is right. And the thing is, though, you'll know... I mean, it, it, it's an interesting thing for me. I mean, it just so happens for me, and I, I've, you know, and I study and I follow, you know, many other teachers or messengers as well, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, it just so happens that I resonate with one particular messenger. Okay. Um, but but the most but the thing mm-hmm. is that it's it's a very interesting thing because the experience that I have with this which I think you know 
many other people experience the same way is that when you do resonate with a, a messenger or a teacher or a practice, you don't re- I, I don't really feel like I'm hearing things that I never knew before. I just feel like I'm suddenly remembering things that I forgot during my very long process of amnesia <laughs> that yeah. I entered when I came into this incarnation, <laughs> this yeah. lifetime. You know, so uh, because I believe that we come in with all the wisdom of, mm-hmm. of the universe when we when we're born, and gradually we we forget it purposefully. Yeah. In order That's, to, um, you know, to be able to uh, experience. contextualize. Yes, yes, we we come, we do. I I do believe that, I, and I say that now. It's not that we're here to learn. We're here to remember. We're here to. We're like we're we're sleepwalking. You know, we're here to wake up because you can you can wake up during a, a a dream at night. You could be they call that lucid dreaming. You can you know you're dreaming, but you're conscious of the fact that you're dreaming. So that's kind of, I think, the goal here. We are really, we're creating this holographic, hope. Ho, am I saying that right? <laughs> holographic mm-hmm. uh, reality. Uh, I believe it's a dream. We are creating our, our uh, experience, and it's a dream. And so we can really experience, we, ha- we chose to forget who we are. Um, and I don't have all the answers as to why we do that, you know, but uh, I believe that we do. I believe that we come here not necessarily to learn, and, and um, Neil speaks about that a lot in his books. It's not a matter of learning. It's, life is not a school. Um, it's not a classroom. It's um, a process of remembering of who, remembering who we are, remembering why we came. Um, and I know that the part of the reason we we choose to forget is so we can really experience it as real. Yeah, know, exactly. That, it's because yeah. of the experiences. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, because yeah. if we already knew everything that was going to happen, right. <laughs> there would be no point <laughs> in doing anything. Yes, it's, it's like okay, let's yeah. Mm. But uh, like I said, I don't have all the answers because I know a lot of people listening to this that, you know, um, saying, what the heck are they talking about? But uh, I thought, you know, it's just something yeah. you, that you have to, like I said, um, I was really, really confused about all, oh, we have a caller. Let, let's, uh, um, someone is calling from 970 area code. Uh, let me click the mic here. Hi, 970. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm Nan- I'm great. I'm Nanette Kennedy, and I love and adore Michelle. Oh, and I just hi, Annette. Now, <laughs> I, I know. I just, I just, uh, and I'm making dinner, and I've got a grandchild running around, so there's background noise. But <laughs> okay. I just wanted to say, I love you, Michelle, and I just think you're doing a great job with. And Michelle's probably not said all of this because I am. Um, did not come into the show on time. And so what I I want to say is that Michelle's a great help, a great volunteer, and I know she's not walking on water as she and I are <laughs> friends and um neither am I. But I just wanted to say it's so good to hear you on the air and I'm just so happy that you're on the air. It's it, it's very uplifting and enlightening, and what both of you are talking about so resonates with me. So I just wanted to say that. Wow! Well, thank you so you much, please, Nanette. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Thank I love you, you too. Annette, Will you please tell everybody, um, tell the listeners um, more about what you do with the Humani- uh, humanities team and the project you're working on now? Can you share that? With our audience? Oh, sh- sure. I'm. I work. I've been working with the humanities team for about eight years now, <clears throat> and <clears throat> and I've known Michelle. Okay, Michelle. I don't know how long, but we've been a long time. And um, Michelle and I both work for humanities team and a project of humanities team called the Evolution Revolution, and we're both about you know spreading the word of awakening the world of oneness. And getting people to go out there and not uh, necessarily 
convert the people that don't believe, but to get the people that do believe that we're all one mm-hmm. become active. Mm-hmm. And right. that's what that's what we need is that we're not out on a pedestal standing up and saying you must believe this way uh, right. at all. And and I just I've really enjoyed the conversation and. Michelle, shame on you for not sharing with me that this was going to be on the air. Oh, I well, I posted it, but you're so busy, you know. I didn't even expect well, you to know about it. Well, I got it from Angela Duck, and, and Angela Duck is another great person that works with us. And I was like, oh, oh, I've got to tune in. And I couldn't figure out how to call in, and so it's taken me about 30 minutes to figure that out. But obviously, oh. I figured oh, that out. on my page. Okay. Well, I wasn't and looking I, at your page. I was yeah. looking at the Blog Talk Radio page. <laughs> oh, it oh, should no be wonder. on there, though. You should see the number. They need to make it bigger, but the number should be on the Blog Talk Radio page. It, but, it was, uh, but I couldn't oh, okay. uh, technologically challenge. I couldn't figure out how to do that without disconnecting my listening to the show. But, I, so oh, I get you. Uh, I see. Yeah. I yeah. am so no, honored I'm, that you called in with all the hats yes. you wear and all. I mean, <laughs> Nanette is like a million people wrapped up into one with the energy yes. she has and all the things that. Oh, she's got a lot of irons in the fire. Well, yeah, and, and I have uh, to say yeah. back to you, I couldn't do it without you. Oh wow! But I'm, I'm so well, honored well, that you. you both you both are on. I I am very very honored. Humanity's team is was one of my inspiration inspired me to start this show. You know, awake to oneness. I know that our our missions are the same. Uh, Humanity's yes, team they are. And, and awake to oneness radio. We have the exact and, and I I've communicated with Steve. Hopefully Steve will be a guest soon. I'm hoping. Hope I'm not. Uh, speaking nice. out of school, as they say, because <laughs> oh, no. I have to check no. uh, my email on that. He sent me an email today. I just haven't read it. <laughs> so, I know uh, that but, feeling. Yes. <laughs> I love uh, what Humanities Team is doing. Humanities Team is so, so awesome. Um, if people out there are not familiar with Humanities Team, Annette, can you tell people the, the website, the URL to sure. check out? Absolutely. It's www.humanitiesteam, and it's not with an I-E-S. It's H-U-M-A-N-I-T-Y-S team.org. And um, and you can, I'm sure you can write to Michelle through her website, too, mm-hmm. um, because she's so involved with both groups, um, Evolution Revolution, which is part of Humanities Team. But you can write to her, too. So Michelle, you should okay. give your information out uh, again. Yeah, and I I won't keep you, but I just want to let you know I'm so happy to hear you on the air. <laughs> Thank you, and it's good to hear from you too. Yeah, and okay. Thank we'll you talk Annette. soon. Thank All right. you, Annette, for calling. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Love you. Bye bye. Love bye-bye. you too. Bye-bye. Awesome. Yeah, she's that remarkable. That was wonderful. That Annette so nice. Called. I know exactly who she is. Uh, uh-huh. Uh huh. She is uh, very, very uh, uh, influential and very busy, like you said, with the, especially with the new project, uh, Evolution Revolution. Um, and also, what is the uh, is that the is Evolution Revolution dot net, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's right. Evolution. If anyone's interested in finding out more about the Evolution Revolution, um, they can go to Evolution Revolution dot net. And it's um, also um, both Humanities Team and Evolution Revolution, for those who are not familiar, um, is um, one of Neil Donald Walsh's, um, I guess I would call him, it's his, he, it's his baby. You know, he started um, Humanities Team, he founded Humanities Team, and he also um, founded Evolution Revolution. So that is... That yes, and, and both, you know, Humanities Team mm-hmm. is basically a global grassroots uh, mm-hmm. nonprofit, top-rated nonprofit organization that is promoting uh, global oneness. Yes. And so we're trying to just find like-minded people, exactly what, mm-hmm. you know, we're not trying to uh, sell anything or convince anybody or, 
you know, this is, it's it's not it's to, it was nothing to did it's not about religion, you know. It it's right. about taking the best parts of of all the you know, whatever religious practice anyone embraces or whatever Correct. spirituality anyone embraces um and and using those things to for the betterment of the world as opposed to whatever separation theology may be, you know. Exactly. Included exactly. With that. Like, the separating the wheat from the chase. <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Lack of yes. better. Understanding that we are truly one, and that because working the world together is at a point. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, no, the no. world is, is is at a point where I mean, there's just so much alienation out in the world. Mm-hmm. You know. And uh, if, yeah, just you mm-hmm. know, why can't we all just get along? <laughs> yes, you know. exactly. yes, Rodney King. Yes, and I love it too. Why can't we all just get along? I, I love that's, it. It's, that it's, it's, it's so true. true. It's so true. So true. Yeah. yeah. And um, yes. you know, so so I just want to say, so um, my book, the thing that makes it uh, different from a lot of other books that we have been talking about on similar topics. Mm-hmm. Is that you know I am an ordinary person. I mean I am I am a writer. I'm I'm a published poet. Poetry is my ultimate passion, and um, mm-hmm. there are a few poems interspersed in the narrative of this book. Uh, it, it's yeah. not a poetry yeah. book, but there are a few poems in there, and mm-hmm. um, uh, you know it serves the the purpose of getting people in touch with their uh, feelings. And mm-hmm. um, you know, and the and the uh, subliminal quality of you know having things seep in subconsciously uh, right. more so. So, right. uh, but but the thing is that I'm an ordinary person. I'm not a world famous person or anything like that. And I had the most incredible experience. I mean, I actually mm-hmm. talked to God. I mean, anyone yes. can do this. I'm not. Yes. I'm not unique. That's. I mean, I'm unique, yes. but I'm not unique in that not sense. Unique. Anyone can have this experience. Anyone well, can that's... change poison into medicine. Anyone mm-hmm. can shift from confusion to clarity. And mm-hmm. the book gives really concrete daily life, simple examples of how to use the tools, how to activate mm-hmm. them in your life, and how to use them. And mm-hmm. ha- how they can play out in different scenarios when you when you do use them. I mean, the, it, the, it's you know, it's it's sort of like the almost, almost like the the dummies guide <laughs> to, um, to to global right. oneness, to spirituality, right, to right. peace, to, to inner to inner yes. peace and healing. Peace. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it comes from that place. That place of inner peace is where clarity comes from. And it, I love. I listened to a, a talk that the Dalai Lama gave one time uh, recently at a college, a university in England, and he said, we are all the same. He sta- you know, he's standing up there as the Dalai Lama speaking to all these professors and students, but he's saying, we are the same. You're saying, you, you know, you, we are all the same, so it's not a matter of being famous or you know, uh, are having a whole lot of money. It's about recognizing that internal um, sameness. Like like you said, we are different, but we are all the same. So it, if that, you know, sometimes um, I, and I, and I think that's what we really, uh, humanities team, your book, my work, is really trying, that message we're trying to share with the world is that, we can focus on our similarities. We don't have to focus on what we view as different. You know, so that's awesome. Michelle, thank you so much. We actually are winding down the hour, and I, I appreciate you so much for, for being my guest tonight. And um, we will definitely be in touch and stay in touch, Okay. Uh, can I mention my links and where people can find out more information? Sure. Um, yeah, we are. We have about thirty-four seconds left. On yeah. The air. Okay. So okay. I spell my name with one L. It's M I C H E L E. My website is michelleharveyauthor dot com. You can read about both of my books. I have two books out: uh, From Confusion to Clarity and Poetry for Living an Inspired Life. Both have pages on Facebook by those same titles. The books are available everywhere 
And you also will find the books and links to her website on my website. Okay, so good night, everybody, and thank you, and I will see you next week. Thank you so much, Caroline. Thank you.